This is Rafi Guzon, and you are tuned in to Nothing But That Sports Talk. Welcome to another episode of Nothing But That Sports Talk. I'm Rafi Guzon, and uh, yeah, it's been a while since we met, but now you finally got a chance to come on the show. Christ the King's alumni, NYU alumni, now she's back to where she started as a strength and conditioning coach, Kelly Rodriguez. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Raph. I appreciate it. Yeah, why don't you talk to me a little bit about like how your basketball career got started? Sure. Um, I actually started off playing baseball, um, mm-hmm. not softball, baseball, um, for a few years. And then eventually, just naturally with the size of the guys and my stature staying the same, I didn't want to transition to playing softball. Um, and then I got into basketball. Uh, So I started playing uh, since elementary school, really, uh, in the Bronx. We didn't have a girls team, so I was pretty much forced to play with uh, the guys at a young age. And naturally, because I do love the game, I did choose to do so. Um, And then I went on after eighth grade. I played all the way through to eighth grade, into high school, played at Christ the King, uh, graduated, uh, went to NYU. I played recreationally at that point. Um, I was just more focused into my adult life past basketball by then, but still played recreationally there. Uh, As you mentioned before, where we met uh, the Rucker, uh, Dykeman, a few other leagues in the city and started strength coaching. Um, And now here we are, I wanted to bridge that uh, strength knowledge into basketball specific, where now I'm uh, strength and conditioning at Christ the King, as you mentioned. So that's pretty much a solid, concise timeline, I would say. Oh, Christ the Kings bring out the best in people sometimes. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of people actually wanted me to stay in the Bronx um, to play here, uh, but I did want the competitive edge at Christ the King. So I learned a lot. Great experience. Don't regret that two hour commute. Uh, that I was taken from the Bronx and uh, let me l- open a lot of doors uh, naturally. So no regrets there ever. Yeah. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what has basketball taught you as an individual throughout your life? Man, what well, hasn't it taught me? I, I think naturally playing in any competitive organized sport, uh, you do naturally just learn me not naturally, it's a big character thing too, but leadership goes a long way. Typically, when you don't play as a leader in, in any organized sport, you tend to stick out. Uh, so really just instill the values of discipline, consistency, battling adversity, uh, and looking out for others besides yourself, and sometimes needing to put the team before your own self. Um, at times. And then also never forgetting the concept of developing your individual self in order to make the team better as well. So that's uh, something, that's why I got into coaching naturally. I do want to emphasize the big need of improving yourself in order to make those around you better. Whether you're an underdog, whether you already have the skill, whether you have uh, um, a natural competitive edge and you're a natural hard worker, but maybe you need some skill development. I'm all for that. Uh, so overall, yes, the power of self and um, being present in the moment as well in everything that you do and not getting caught up in really watching what anybody else is doing. Uh, that literally has no effect on you and what you want. So it's it's extremely, I guess the big moral of the story is always know what you want as an individual. So that way you know what resources to seek for what you want individually. Yeah, um, that's very important. I mean, we all should look out for ourselves no matter what career that we pick, no matter what career path we pick, right. whether it's in sports or, or fitness or, fitness or strength conditioning and, every, and pretty much all the above. Now, now, when you talk like, how do you manage to maintain self-care self-care especially when coaches are telling you about your weaknesses as a basketball player and a fitness trainer right 
That's a great question. Um, it, it really takes the ability to wake up every day, uh, regardless how you feel waking up, uh, it always comes back to knowing what you want. So as long as you know your end goal and you're faced with a decision every day to make this, uh, you're faced with a, the decision every day to choose between doing something that helps bridge the gap towards where you want to be ultimately or choosing a habit that's not bridging that gap. So literally every day this morning, for example, I woke up extremely exhausted from the, the work day before. However, because I know what I want, big picture, that is enough of a driving factor to get me out of the bed. And I know I'm not the only one that faces that waking up when you open your eyes in the morning, it's like, damn, I'm tired. I could literally stay in bed. But that is the power in your ability to make a decision is literally the most powerful thing we all hold as individuals. So keeping that in mind all the time, knowing that it's it's up to me to achieve the things that I want, that gets me out of bed every morning. Um, of course, self-care is, is balanced as well. So even in the moments where I do need to rest naturally, that is also an intentional choice that I'm making. So whether I'm resting, whether I'm working to my full capability, those are both intentional choices to create that harmony to keep me sustainable. Um, even individuals I train now, when we're on the court, when we're in the weight room, we are there. And when we're not, you're either doing other habits that are getting you to your ultimate goal or you're resting. And a lot of um, the difficulty a lot of young players have these days is realizing that a lot of the work to get you to your end goal doesn't involve a basketball. It could be diet, it could be your sleep, it could be your hydration levels. Even if you take away diet, water and sleep, literally two most important things. So that has nothing to do with a basketball. Um, so that's, it's really about balance and understanding not every, not everything requires a basketball. Um, so yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting point. And um, I remember in off the air, you mentioned something about taking a break from summer basketball to take care of your physical and mental health. I mean, how difficult was struggling to step away from street ball at least this kind of the year, 2020? Oh, man. See, uh, that's another great point. Um, we all face decisions that it may not be fun, but again, you have to make, uh, you don't have to, you just, it's wise to choose the option that helps you become sustainable. So it was very tough. This is the first summer I'm not playing street ball. Um, do I have the itch? Of course. But do I know that the risk of me getting injured, how much that would put me back from being able to help somebody in the coaching room, that weighs more for me at this point. So that's a conscious decision that I make as a coach. Okay, I don't need to play street ball right now because what are, what's risk versus reward here? Again, if I get hurt, I don't have the ability to coach people in the way that for me is most beneficial for them. Um, so it's just coming down to making sacrifices is always a sacrifice. But as long as you know where that choice is taking you, it's a lot easier to make that sacrifice. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm here supporting everybody from the sidelines now. That's an interesting point. I mean, it's a good thing that you know that even though physically you can get back to basketball any time, but you want to look, focus on, with this new opportunity you presented at Christ and Kings or Alamada, you want to focus on, on being the best strength and conditioning coach that you could be for up-and-coming players this year coming up, including in Kyan Anthony, the son of Kamo Anthony. You see, you've seen him practicing on the Black Ops gym. Yeah. Nice Tom Sky Gym. That that's yeah, pretty. Yeah. And I see photos of you at the gym, and you well, you got you reach out to me. In the cut, yeah, I'm in the cut. I'm to, in the to, cut. Let, to give you props on my interview with Chris Brickley, 
it's like you're doing things. Yeah. You're you're making yourself a, a trainer and a physical coach, and you're working with other trainers and coaches. Right. It's important. You need them. You need a. It's important to have a mentor, but making sure that the mentor also wants what's best for you. So um, that's uh, yeah, that's a valid another valid point. Um, and making sure that I'm under the mentorship of people that can take me to where I, I need to be. So it's not just getting in the gym with the youth or with a pro athlete or a college athlete and telling them random things. If I want to be the best, just like anything else, anybody else wanting to be the best at what they do for themselves, you need the education first. So it's educational and then there's the practical part to it. Um, so, you know, the best of both worlds there. So, yeah, there's a lot of it. We're back in school. We're always learning. We're students of life here. So that's a very interesting point. And speaking of getting the education part of it, like, want to talk well you had the education to play basketball up until you couldn't play anymore want to talk tell everybody about the education start to becoming a fitness trainer since you actually yeah. became a fitness trainer at super fitness shout out to them mm -hmm. and and also you do fitness training on your own so why don't yeah. you talk about that whole process from For sure. education start yeah yeah so um after college I faced, it was a phase of my life where what I was studying, which was communication sciences, I minored in business, but communication sciences was my major. I wasn't feeling passionate about what I was doing. Um, it was a tough call, but I did not go to grad school just because I just didn't feel like throwing out money for a profession I didn't want. Um, so I ended up working as an administrative uh, position at a gym, Trooper Fitness in East Midtown. Uh, the business part, administrative tasks, that was easy for me. What I fell in love with naturally from taking the classes there is I realized I wanted to become a coach. Uh, got certified, started coaching, and I had a couple great mentors uh, that told me a pretty solid foundation of strength, metabolic conditioning. Raph, you came and took a class, you can attest. Um, and again, yeah, it kind of, yeah and, it, and you can tell I was knocked out. That's good. <laughs> That's work. That's work. But, um, so yes, again, same thing as now, uh, things don't change in that regard. I was learning, applying. And at the same time, uh, while I was learning there and teaching classes, I wanted pretty much everyone in my circle to come and take classes too. So. Uh, maybe a few people who watch this interview, they've taken the class, but that was the goal. I wanted to learn and then give it right back. So that's all I did there. Come COVID, everything transitioned to virtual, um, tapped into that person ability a little more because who didn't need an extra push during that time? So I leveraged off of that time to really help keep people inspired to be their best self, even while locked in. Um, and then left Trooper, and, and went on to doing things a bit independently. And as I was playing basketball again throughout the summer, I realized, man, I would love to just tailor that for basketball specific or just functional fitness um, in general as well. Uh, and then that's when I got the internship over at the summit uh, under Mike Atkinson. And uh, here we are. Here we are. So. Again, it's all about education and um, anyone can call themselves a leader, uh, but from what I've experienced, true leaders put themselves in the position to always learn, uh, learn their craft to be able to help others in a very legit way. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the origin there with strength. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of reps, uh, textbook reps, classroom reps, everything, you know, everything's a big picture. So, but my biggest learning lesson was knowing when to rest. So that just always comes back now to these young athletes who are playing high volume basketball. It's super important understanding when to not play that, that summer game, 
when is it smart to play when is it not smart to play um you know so yeah not everything involves a basketball so yeah that's pretty much it and i've actually in uh, as you mentioned before i've actually been to the been to the gym a couple of times i even took a class of you make no mistake about it you really worked people over there you really worked me to the point where i couldn't even be in the, in the group picture because i was just so it was so freaking I, don't even I think i remember that but I mean, yeah that, those I, barely are fun to, I barely wanted to get up but i also learned that you know what i just had to get more accustomed to being at the gym a bit more than i actually was because there were times when i went to the gym and i realized you know what my body just had to get used to the workouts first before i can actually before i can That's actually great. you know what i love i love being trained by kelly I appreciate but it was but part of the part of the reason why I never commit to it as much as I, I used to be do. I mean, I like to be a fitness trainee, but I also like like holding on to hold, holding on to wealth and, and mental yeah. and be focused right. on helping myself. Right. That's what it's about. So that's, that's what it's all about. about. And yeah. before you say anything, like why don't you like if if you notice that the goalpost for yourself is moved so many times and when that happens, how did you were able to handle it? What was moving? I'm sorry that it cut off a bit. I noticed that there were times where the, during the whole conversation up until this point, you notice the goalpost has moved so many times. How do you manage to handle yourself when the goalpost that you that you set for yourself is always moved a lot? Oh, so you mean basically uh, my direction has changed throughout the journey, essentially, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always tough. I can't lie. There there were days I felt like giving up. I felt like this was a difficult journey that I chose. Um, but progress isn't linear, and I've accepted that. And you, when you when when you really know what you want, um, you just need to be as flexible as possible to adapting. And I've taken that with as much grace as I can. I don't wake up expecting anything. I just wake up knowing what I want and accepting that I will do what it takes to get there. And things will change, and that's a part of it. So this is a very, it's not linear at all. And sometimes you'll go 10 steps forward. Sometimes you'll go a million steps back. But that's the beauty of the journey. And accepting that the journey is genuinely where the gold is, is not at the end, it's now. And facing all this adversity is what makes success uh, feel good. If it was just handed to you, honestly, you wouldn't really want it. It wouldn't feel the same. That's like going pro because you woke up and you had a good high school game one time. You know, it's it's about knowing that you're really facing adversity and you know in your heart when you're doing your best. So that's what takes me, is knowing that I'm genuinely doing the best I can. Yes, we all make mistakes, but when you own your mistakes, learn from them, that's literally, um, it's all a part of it. So I'm sure you know, Raph, you, your journey is, I'm sure it's like this, right? But you know where you want to be. So uh, that's the beauty of the journey for me. It sounds cliche, but it really, you live it is really true. So. Yeah. And is that kind of mentality why you was able to hold that in your, in your hand so many times? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And knowing when to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> that part too, like I said. So. Yeah. But when you look, but like, with, with, without that, that whole process that you mentioned alone, that you mentioned led to, led to you well not only be a fitness trainer at Trooper Fitness, but also you got to play super basketball tournaments. So you want to talk about the whole experience of being able to hoop at some of the, the biggest basketball landmarks across New York City. Man, that was uh it's fun. And I I won't say I'm retired just yet. Who knows? Maybe next summer, let's see where life takes me. Uh, maybe I'll have more leverage to do so. But Honestly, uh, when you're naturally competitive, I think I left every game at the Rucker feeling like, damn, I, I could have did this, damn, I could have did that. But that's ego. 
um, shouldn't be thinking that I should just be grateful that I'm able to play the game, but there's really nothing like any atmosphere of, like that. I mean, I've played games, as, as you mentioned, at Christ the King. It's different. Something about that streetball New York uh, vibe it just opens up a different beast in you. You really want to be at your best. Otherwise, you're going to get made fun of. And it's it's getting the respect from the uh, the commentators as well. Uh, Mike Larry, he actually took one of my classes at Trooper, but he was the first uh, commentator that I needed to earn his respect. So I did whatever I needed to do um, to do so. But I mean, overall, they're they're fun. They're fun. It's what you make it. Um, you can't take it too seriously in terms of beating yourself up. It's all a part of it. Um, and I, it's something I would definitely do again. Playing in the the sun, that's another that's another beast as well. Um, but overall, I would I would definitely do it again. Great experience. And then playing with the girls too that have that similar mindset as you. Um, savage mode. I'm all for that. So yeah, it's a great experience overall. Yeah. And through that experience, you get to compete against players like Nikki Avery, Nia Rose. Exactly. Up with Hannah Ho Flynn, who's doing a major job as a content creator. And I'm sure you go see, see you've seen some of her videos, but if you haven't, you feel free to check her out because Hannah Ho Flynn is doing an amazing job. She's a very lovable person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was my first uh, teammate at the Rucker. I played with Hannah. Um, she was captain of our team. Trust me, I was there. I was there. Yeah, there you go. That's where we met. Um, but that's that's the, another side of the component is the competitive edge, but also the community of the other woman you're able to be around, like minded people. Uh, that's that's really the first and foremost thing that I appreciated. So, yeah, for sure, um, it's very well, empowering environment for sure. Mm -hmm. so, Why don't you tell me a little bit about like how you managed to establish the relationships that you built? while being involved in basketball and fitness throughout your life? Yeah, the uh, main way to, that I was able to maintain any type of relationship was um, in giving back my craft. So if I met you through basketball or through training, the way that we kept that type of relationship was for me, helping you in your passion. How can I help this person? Um, through my passion to help with their passion so i mean coincidence not coincidentally but we all aligned um, if i'm playing basketball with you typically you care about your health or it's something that you've been wanting to um, partake on so i just do my best to bring my expertise uh to that community and help them become better players on and off the court um and that's really really there and I can only hope that they all know I'm always a, um, a resource for them. Hannah has taken my class too, actually. So she's Everybody here. is taking your class. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> that's something I, I overlooked a lot. Uh, it feels like it was, a, it was before COVID and during COVID, but that's something I always cherish is just being able to give back in that regard to these people who I know they just want to be great so however I can help you be great on your respective journey, that makes my journey more fruitful too. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, I'm so glad you're grateful for that. And it's because it's that type of mindset when building relationships with the people that you either play basketball with or trained, it's, it's what led to, act, work, to being involved with Black Ops basketball and being a fitness, like from a fitness perspective and every other perspective, with a certain NBA skills trainer named Chris Brickley. <laughs> now, I don't know if you watched the whole interview, <laughs> but if you haven't, I'm just gonna play a clip of it. I'll, I'll have to, I definitely saw clips because I was on the run um, back and forth, but I saw clips. I was, it was really dope to see that for sure. It's good representation, so yeah, you're out there. You're out there. I see you making it happen no matter what, so. That's something I've always appreciated about you too. Um, just out there doing your best every day. So that's all we could do. Yeah. 
But um, why don't I just play the interview with Chris Brickley since I understand how much you admire this man so much. You got to work with him. Yeah, yeah. I, currently, I'm more on the... So Chris Brickley is doing strictly player development. Um, and right now I'm working directly with Mike Atkinson, who um, is more on the strength and conditioning lens, which is why I'm working with him, because that's the knowledge base that I really want to develop for basketball specific. Um, we're all in the same building, though, making it happen. And just naturally being in that space, uh, there's a different level of professionalism that definitely sets you apart in this industry. And it's really inspiring um, being around those type of leaders who just don't take no for an answer um, and just have years upon years of experience. Um, it really, I feel very blessed. Um, I'm extremely grateful to be able to be in such doors and also to be the only woman that's there. I can't explain. Every morning, I, that's what gets me out of bed. I'm extremely grateful at this opportunity and not taking any day for granted and learning as much as I can, whether it's the knowledge base of basketball, strength and conditioning, or even just general professionalism too, that comes with this, that helps uh, the small things that help make the experience that much more satisfying for the athlete. So it's all all the details, the small details. And um, shout out to Mike Atkinson, um, great mentor. That's all, that's what I could say. Extremely great mentor, extremely in a place of inspiration, great leadership. And I just can't wait uh, for what doors will soon open with all of this knowledge that I'm acquiring. So, and also when I think about um, how much knowledge I'm able to bring back to the girls over at Christ the King. That's the true prize in all of this. Um, that was a true approach initially. Um, hey, Mike, uh, may I please basically be under your guidance so I can help out this next generation of, of women um, have a type of training that they never had. Uh, so I know when I was an athlete, I didn't have that level of guidance in terms of strength and conditioning. So it's bigger than me. It actually has nothing to do with me. I'm just a tool. <laughs> I'm a vessel of knowledge and doing my best to leak it out to those around me. So yeah. that's, the that's pretty much it. Now, here's a look, you yeah. know, now, now that you've got that out the way, here's a little clip from my interview with Chris Brickley back in the Nike Pro City earlier this week that obviously you got to see, but I'm going to show it anyway for those that didn't get to see it. Nice. I'm back again, and we have an NBA skills trainer here. Let everybody know who you are and what you do. Man, what I do, I'm an NBA skills trainer. I work with like 30 to 40 NBA guys. I also work with uh, some of the elite college players and some of the elite high school players. How do you think that your, your, your skills training made a huge impact on some of the NBA players that we're watching today, especially the guys playing in Nike Pro City? For sure. I mean, it's everything. It's, uh, you know, it's the behind the scenes. It's what they do. They, the bones, right? It's about to play. He might score 40 points, and it happens from the work that we do and the work that he puts in. So it means everything. How do you feel that you made a huge impact on the basketball community, not just in real life, but also in NBA 2K? Because I see you made an appearance on 2K. Yeah, uh, the 2K thing was amazing. Um, I, I Literally, that happened, and like overnight, like the whole world is like training with me virtually and uh, changed my life in a sense. So like I go to the airport, people recognize me, and a lot of people are like, oh, wow, you're a real person. I thought you were just a video game character, so it's funny. Yeah, real funny indeed. Why don't you name me some of your top five NBA players in this era of basketball? That I've trained or total, or overall. What? Overall? I'm going to say that I train. I'm going to say LeBron, uh, KD, uh, James Harden, uh, Donovan Mitchell, and uh, up-and-coming one, Paolo, Paolo Benchero. Yeah, earlier this year, LeBron James broke the NBA's all-time scoring list. I mean, what are your overall thoughts on the type of player that LeBron has grown in throughout his NBA career? 
Yeah, the end. What are your overall thoughts on the type of player LeBron has evolved in? Now, LeBron's work ethic is crazy. Um, and I forgot a guy, Jimmy Butler, who had an amazing playoff run. I was with him the whole playoff run. And, uh, yeah, no, Jimmy Butler's really good. What are your expectations for the upcoming NBA season? Uh, I think it's going to be a good season. I like the uh, in-season tournament that they're adding. And uh, I got the Heat winning it all. I think Dame's going to go to the Heat, and Jimmy and Dame will take it all. Yeah, that was my interview with Chris Brickley. For those who that don't know, I mean, what I mean, what what have you learned from hearing Chris Brickley talk about his ability to train basketball players, players, and actually evaluating the type of careers that they've had? Yeah, that I mean that type of mindset. Anything is possible, um, and it's it's brilliant to see again him bridge all the experience that he has and be able to train athletes at this caliber um it's remarkable it's it's inspirational uh to be short and um also comes down to it's it's a wonderful thing to see the genuine relationships that he builds with players and i've seen it firsthand too at this point um the relationships he's building is is genuine and that's really what helps the training. Of course, it's expertise in the training, but if you're able to bridge the gap of building a genuine relationship and bringing expertise, literally the best of both worlds. And you hear how confident he is about it. Um, so extremely inspirational, um, respect it for sure. Yeah, when well, you told me that you currently work at the same gym you're using, I, I thought to myself, man, Kelly, you are really coming a long way. I mean, you probably have a longer way to go, but you come a long way with uh, from playing basketball to now working with one of the top NBA skills trainer. He started his career off being uh, as with his involvement with the New York Knicks players. Now he's training many different many other top names like James Harden, J Jimmy Butler, Kyan Anthony, Kyan, yeah. um, Pablo Bianco, Pablo. There's just so much different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a lot. Being trained. And when you're being trained by, by one of the top trainers, they, they, you're going to go into the season pulling off some crazy moves and game with the shots. Yeah, it's, you, you feel supported and you feel seen. And that brings a different type of confidence when you when you know the team that's behind you um, is genuine. That definitely helps. I'm, I'm sure as a player to know you have that type of support system. And like I mentioned, um, Mike Atkinson, he's a director of performance at Black Ops and the work that he does with the players as well, again, extremely inspirational and the knowledge base that he's bringing to warm up athletes and to prime their bodies for these workouts with Chris Berkeley, that's also super important. So it's, you know, sometimes jumping right into a workout uh, is not ideal. Imagine coming off of a plane, right? Hours in the air. Uh, you need to make sure your body is primed. Um, and he definitely does an extremely beneficial job at doing that as well, priming these players for these workouts. So shout out to Mike Atkinson. Yeah, Mike Atkinson and Chris Brigger, they're doing big things together. I mean, what, like for those, let the world know, for those of you that don't know who Mike Atkinson is, I mean, I know you already mentioned he's a player performance trainer, but want to let, them know, let the world know who he is and the type of career that he has and how, and how is he yeah. taught you to become a better new person in the, in, the, in the sports science industry? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he worked directly with Chris Berkeley. So they were in it together um, pretty much from the jump. And um, he's done the steps. He has years upon years of experience in what he does as well. Um, and he also took the steps uh, to develop a really solid knowledge base. So academically. So on top of his academic uh, criteria, he has the years upon years at pro experience. Um, and I, he's extremely passionate about what he does and he treats everybody the same. Um, and he has a genuine care to just help every athlete become the best version. He's he's a walking resource. And um, yeah, I mean, again, I just, it always comes down to me just being extremely blessed to be working with him every day. Um, and he's taught me it's it's the level in the small details 
you could say you're a leader, but if you're not taking the steps to educate yourself, it's tough to really help others um, in the best way. So professionally, academically, great leadership all around. Great person, great yeah. human being, so. Yeah, and, and the main thing is both you people have in common. You guys are all about leadership. And to wrap up this episode, I mean, we want to let everybody know why leadership is very important in sports science. Leadership is important, sports science, and everything you do is parallel. Um, and the reason why it's important, it's it comes down to accountability, um, taking ownership of what you do, and knowing that what you do every day is is really not for you it's it's for others it's to keep generations getting better that's like even within a family unit every generation in the family you want them to excel each generation makes sacrifices so the next generation coming can progress and that cannot happen in a genuine way if the current leaders are not taking the accountability to be their best self in every way in order to let that next generation progress. So that comes, it, it, that's really the importance of leadership in a nutshell. It's, it's self-love to be able to maximize um, the next group of people coming. Um, so accountability at its finest is great. It's, that's leadership in my opinion, so. Yep. That's a very important topic. And leadership helps in every single industry across the world. Yeah. Yep. Parallel. Everything. Even if even when we're not talking about any type of profession, just in life. Right? Just just the spectrum of being a human being. Um, that's why it's important to treat everybody the same. Um, you know, just really harvesting on that, treating everybody the same. Um, and just making sure that you're giving out love to everybody around you, irrespective to what you feel you can get from them. Otherwise, it's not genuine. So mastering that, protecting your energy, so that way you reserve it for those who really need your help. And so it's a beautiful thing, for sure. A lot of learning lessons um, along the way. So. Yeah, that is also true. And now on this episode, nothing but that sports star. Thank you for stopping by, Kelly. I love the fact that you finally got an opportunity to come on the show to talk about leadership, building building a community, and, and being involved in sports science. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you. Yeah. And to everybody out there listening, we'll see you next time.